Mr. Rapkison? Yes, I'm here, Mikey K. How are you, sir? Pleasant evening to you. And thank you so much for Pleasant taking time out. Well, you, you've, had, you, you've, had, you've had quite a day. I know that for a fact. Uh, earlier today, of course, uh, you, along with retired fire officers, staged a protest outside the Rison Road Fire Station in Port of Spain. And this, of course, is over the removal of meal and housing allowances. What, what's going on? Give us an update. Well, you know, the Fire Service Association, we stood in solidarity with our retirees. Right. We have... We have been representing them in the in the courts, in the special tribunal, as well as the high court. And there are a multiplicity of issues, one of which is not before the court. So we took it to the fire service headquarters to raise it with the chief fire officer. Uh, we, we were in solidarity with them, with the retirees. And uh, the, the issue is that the non-payment of their their housing and their meal allowances that should have been paid since 1998 was stripped of stripped from them unceremoniously unilaterally you know um for a period of time and you know these officers are now struggling to to recover that monies because these are retired officers they are suffering and, and remember mikey k they are operating in a time where they are being told that, one, the, the RIC is looking to increase the electricity, the, the rate at which they have to pay for electricity. And more than that, the, the government is threatening to increase the pensionable age at which these NIS contributions yes. yeah. would be made available to them to 65, yeah. right. knowing that these officers had to retire at age 55. So they had to wait a whole 10 years, 10 years before they could access a retire retirement. Imagine you retired and cannot access your pension until 10 years after the fact. What are you to do? Yeah. What are you to do in that and, and, and it makes you wonder, I mean, if, if somebody has to... Uh, listen, uh, this thing is such a hothead. Why give the people their money there, man? They have to deal with property tax. They have to deal with an increase in electricity rates. They have to deal with food. They have to deal with all of these issues. And yet still some of them can't even... You know, they're out there today, and that might be the only exercise because some of them are bedridden. They couldn't make it out today. It, it's hard on them. I mean, give us an idea of what they're experiencing on a daily basis, because it's hard. And let's not sell it for anything else. It's hard on these individuals. And then on top of that, those who were thinking that they would have gotten some money to go by the credit union for Christmas because they were ready to do some special thing where you get 10 or uh, 10 more than what you, if you have 40,000, you get 400,000. And they will have a, a turkey in the oven, a ham, and none of this is going to be happening. None of this is going I, to be happening, and everybody is crying out, and so many people are suffering. Give us an idea what these people are going through, man. I would tell you that I had officers out there with me today that are literally visually impaired, blind officers. Um, we have officers who are suffering from all different types of ailments that are associated with old age. They have retired, they served the country for upwards of 30 years, and their, their service as auxiliary firefighters are not being recognized. So we have that in the courts, so that the courts will rule on that. We are hoping that the courts will rule on that because the law says that, that, that their service should be recognized. But aside from that, these officers, based on their entitlements having attracted a contractual arrangement prior to entry into the fire service, they would have stated, you know, without fear of contradiction, it is stated in black and white in their contract that they are entitled to these allowances. They would deny those allowances for several years. And the officers are now asking for these allowances to be paid just to survive. And we are in a situation where these officers are now, you know, still struggling, although 
the chief fire officer, as well as the Ministry of National Security, is admitting and, 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 and saying the officers are to be paid, the issue is releases of the funds. So we, we go into this whole rhetoric, this continual rhetoric, so the officers are not being paid as, as yet. So we are in, still in these dire circumstances and hoping that at some point some relief will come the way of these officers. This among the many other issues. Yeah, but 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 but, but 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 there's a lot of money. This is a lot of money, and I mean it keeps piling up. This is a lot of money. And listen, it, it doesn't give anybody the incentive to go out there and and actually, I don't know. I, I, they talk about crime, but who wants to join a service if after putting in all of that? all of that dedication and commitment and, and being there and serving, and at the end of the day, just to get what is rightfully yours. It's like pulling teeth. I mean, come I on. I will tell you, MIPK, I had a conversation with the Minister of National Security this evening. Now, truth be told, he agreed to have a meeting with us to try to see if we could work out our differences and where we're going wrong. But I will tell you, you know, the situation, as I told him, it is dire. It is a situation where, you know, it is unacceptable at this stage where officers, in effect, can, according to the OSH Act, down tools. They could stop work. And the officers have refused to do that simply because they have a commitment to the public. They have a commitment to the, the man and the woman and the, the child and the elderly and those out there who are vulnerable. They, are, they have that commitment, and that's the reason they stay on the job. But really and truly, they have a right to preserve them, their own selves. And they are not being provided with the, the, the personal protective equipment that they need. And I demanded of the minister a meeting to rectify this issue and, and, and chart the way forward. The minister agreed to that meeting. So I, I, I look forward to that. But, you know, I've been in this seat for so long. Yeah, you... I cannot take for granted those right. sort of promises. No, but, but the bottom line is you're not going to hold your breath. That's the bottom line. No, you're, you're not going to hold your hold breath. breath. And, I, and I understand right. that. And it makes you wonder. I mean, here it is. We are having a conversation here on national television. People from across the region, it, they're viewing, they're looking in and asking themselves, you, you mean to tell me they want people to operate in the capacity as a fire officer, but they don't concern whether or not they have the equipment, they have the, the, you know, the proper gear. I mean, come on, this is 2023 we're talking about. Another thing, Chief Fire Officer Arnold Bristol made it quite clear via the media that his administration had nothing to do with the acquisition of the million dollar purchase of 20 wooden ladders. Now, I'm still trying to figure out wooden ladders to fight fire. All right. So the National Security Minister has called for a probe into the million dollar purchase of 20 wooden ladders for the fire service. Now, that money, if it is you couldn't find the right ladders, could have gone to these gentlemen who are out there in the hot sun, sweating like runaway slaves today, hoping and praying that somebody give them what is rightfully theirs. Rather than in their psyche, they believe that they have done all of their service and somebody just waiting because of the whole retirement thing that, hey, you know what, forget them. They go drop off, they go die like fly, and we got to pay them no money. I mean, this, this can't be serious. You know, Mikey K, this thing is such a mess. And you know, you're right. But, I, but, you know, I have to tell you, eh, you know, the minister is saying that he is distancing himself from the process. The chief fire officer is also distancing himself from the process. The minister is calling for an investigation. Who is he calling for this investigation from? Is he calling on the police to investigate? Who is he calling this, this, this investigation to take place? The chief fire officer cannot investigate himself. The permanent secretary in the Ministry of National Security cannot investigate himself. It is the minister who these two public officers report to has to call, has to implement an investigation, not call for an investigation. These things, they, they need to get serious about it. 
Yes. If we have to stamp out corruption, if we have to stamp out, you know, misappropriation and mismanagement, you cannot be serious when you say, when you hold that position to say you call for investigation and that's the end of it. No, 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 no. The, the public, you're hoping that the public forget about that next week and we move on to the next topic. Yeah, and, then, and, and you're right. And there must be a serious team. You can't, you can't call PC Williams, who now joined the service, and the only thing he has done is tell people in the court to put a shirt in their pants to go and investigate this million-dollar purchase of 20 wooden ladders. You can't call upon him. And that's what we've been getting all the time. None of these things are being resolved. And at the same time, people are suffering. Why our fire officers, police officers, prison officers, and the list goes on, have to make so much of a commitment and dedication when they sign on for this job. And at the end of the day, this is what they have to go through in order to get the benefits which are rightfully theirs. How long are we going to sit by and take this? Well, well, I would tell you, Mikey Key, and I, I would tell you, and I'm calling on your listeners and your viewers to come and join us because, you know, in the, in the month of November, which happens to be my birthday month. I told my members this month, there is no better birthday gift than they could give me, than they could come and join with me. Throughout this month, we are going to be engaging in protest action. We are going to be highlighting these issues. We are going to be pounding the ground. It is not acceptable what is happening. We are going as fire officers to ensure that everybody in Trinidad and Tobago is made aware of what is happening in our fire services and how these managers and these politicians are operating with us and, and you know, force those in authority to recognize that the safety of our citizens. I, I keep reminding us, what about Kemba, Kemba Morris? Yeah. And Zaya Morris, I will never forget them. I will never forget the, the, all the deaths that we had for this 2023 that could have been prevented had we had our clients where in those stations, Siparia Fire Station and Miaro Fire Station and so on, Santa Cruz Fire Station and so on. I will never forget them. And in that regard, I am calling on the public to join with us fire officers, we will be holding protest action. We will be holding protest action to ensure that our plight is placed on the front burner so that the safety of our citizens in Trinidad and Tobago is put for, foremost in this fight. All right. Hey, I want to thank you so much, comrade, for linking with us this evening. We will be checking in with you periodically. And again, all the best to you and your entire team. Best of luck. I mean, no back pay. What's going to happen as far as putting something in the oven for Christmas? And on top of that, you're still struggling to get what is deserving and rightfully yours. Well, you see, I haven't even spoken about that. And let me tell you, my members are very deeply saddened about that. But even before you can talk about back pay, it's just health and safety alone. Just the basic entitlements we, we we're struggling for. Yeah. We're even talking about health and safety. I want to thank you, comrade, for inviting me on the program. Thank all your listeners for giving us that listening here. And I would always make myself available any time to, to report to your listeners and to you Thank on you. The, the proceedings as we move forward. Thank you so much. All the best. Keep up the good work.